Hello guys and welcome to a tropical update. Uh, I just want to apologize that I haven't had any, you know, updates as of late. I've been kind of busy with some things. But over on Twitter, I have been giving out short updates of whatnot of Claudette. And, uh, you know, in this video, we're going to be going over Tropical Storm Claudette that formed at the 5 a.m. advisory. But also later on in the video, we'll be talking about Dolores as well in the Eastern Pacific. Anyways, here we are on the National Hurricane Center page, and we do, in fact, have a Tropical Storm Claudette here. And uh, this, this formed at 5 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time, and it had winds of 45 miles an hour. The central pressure is 1,006 millibars. It's located 30.4 north, 90.1 west, and it's moving north-northeast at 10 knots, or 12 miles an hour. So, you know, there was a, there's a lot of debate going on whether this should be classified as a tropical cyclone or not a tropical cyclone. Obviously, I'm... I'm going to not get involved in that. Uh, I'm going to just trust in the processes here. And, uh, you know, all I do is try to give you guys the information here. So, um, you know, whether it was, whether it would have been named or not, it would have been the same results either way. So that's how I look at it right now. All right. So here's what uh, the National Hurricane Center is saying. Claudette inland over southeastern Louisiana. Heavy rain, tropical storm force winds continue along portions of the northern Gulf Coast. So... You, you have these 45 mile per hour winds, which are probably getting about 55 or 60 mile per hour gust on the side. Because the in some of the severe thunderstorms that this thing has produced, there have been 81 mile per hour wind gusts. That is a solid category one of gusts. So we're definitely getting some hurricane gusts in some of those thunderstorms that are moving through with the area. All right, so what do we have here? for the forecast discussion. As you can see, 12 hours. So it's inland right now at 45, and then it starts to weaken to 40, and then uh, 24 hours from now it goes to a tropical depression, and then 36 hours, 70, uh, 60 hours is post-tropical. But then, this, this right here is the kicker right here. The NHD forecasts this to become a tropical cyclone again. And, and they did did say that their 40 mile per hour secondary peak is kind of conservative too. So we're going to have to see what it does once it gets off the east coast of the United States. Um, my personal opinion, my secondary peak is about 55 or 60 miles per hour be, just because of the Gulf Stream. So we're going to see how that you know plan pans out here as we go forward. All right, so here we are looking at the GFS. This was initialized at 6Z this morning, and this is six hours out. As you can see, it hasn't really moved all that much. 12Z, it's still it's still keeping on to the circles. 18, 24, 30, 36. Uh, GFS is the only, I think GFS is the only model that doesn't want to reform this off the East Coast. So we're going to have to see how that, pans out as we go out through time. So yeah, that's what the GFS shows. What about the European? This was initialized as zero C. So this was 8 PM last night. So this is a, you know, long ways ago at this current point in time. There's 24, there's 48. And look at that. Right off the Virginia and North Carolina coast, a 993 millibar tropical storm. That is definitely a strong, strong tropical storm. And that's why I'm going with the 55 to 60 mile per hour secondary peak for now. I mean, the, my opinions can change as we get closer to the 70, 60 hour or 72 hour mark. So, you know, regardless, you know, I think Claudette still has a long... Uh, another five, six, seven days with us still before it goes to put. So a lot, a lot to track here as we go forward. And as we see, there's five days out and it dissipates from that time. All right. So here's the sea that sea surface temperatures. And as you can see off the coast of North Carolina, we got the warm Gulf stream here. Um, these are 26, 25 degrees, uh, 
Celsius, which should be enough to, to sustain some strengthening of a tropical cyclone. Uh, I, I say 25 is... Okay. 25 is kind of there, but not not there, if, if you know what I mean. Like, 25 is probably a, the bare minimal, bare minimal of this... Uh, of trying to keep it a tropical cyclone, but you know that event is three, three to four days out, and these water temperatures can warm between now and then. So, as you can see, we got some twenty sixes out here, just uh, to the east of uh, Virginia, and uh, we got some twenty sixes and twenty sevens off the North Carolina coast. It it all just depends really on how how soon it takes that east northeast turn. Whether it gets into these 26, 26 and the 27s or the 25s and 26s. So this is also important when it decides to make that east-northeast run towards the coast as we go out through time. Alright, so here is, they look at the IRR here. And as you can see, there's a big blob of showers and thunderstorms that are uh, kind of sp expanding a little bit as it, go as it heads into land. Um, the center is exposed here right around this area. So most of the thunderstorm activity is to the east and north of it. As you can see here, uh, Alabama and parts of the western Florida panhandle are absolutely getting slammed right now with uh, thunderstorms. So, you know, please take caution as some of these thunderstorms are known to cause tornadoes in them. We've definitely had some tornado warnings. Uh, I don't know if we've had confirmed tornadoes or not yet, so somebody can correct me if I'm wrong here. But, you know, just look out for flash flooding, uh, tornadoes, and uh, some obviously some very gusty winds. Um, but you should stay around 45 or 50 sustained. So, you know, we should still be looking out for some wind damage as well as we go out through time. Okay, so now we're going to switch gears here. And now we're going to talk about the Eastern Pacific and Dolores. I don't know somebody can correct me if I said that wrong, but I'm going to go with Dolores. Anyways, here we are. Dol uh, Tropical Storm Dolores. Uh, this has 65 mile per hour sustained winds. Minimal central pressure is 994 millibars. It's located 17.9 north, 103.4 west, and it's moving north-northwest at 13 miles an hour. Okay, so here we go. Dolores still gradually strengthening and nearing landfall along the western Michoacan or Colima coast. Heavy rain bands continue to storm uh, stream onshore. So we're going to take a look here at the, this discussion here, and it's... Uh, And it's uh, pretty much 80 miles from land here, so it probably has a good like six or seven hours before it makes landfall, according to this. All right, so the cent uh, center of Tropical Storm Dolores was located near latitude 17.9 north, longitude 103.4 west. Dolores is moving faster towards the north northwest near 13 miles an hour, and this motion is expected to continue until landfall. Dolores is forecasted to make landfall along the southwestern coast of Mexico within the next few hours. We're going to read this down here too. Maximum sustained winds have increased to near 65 miles per hour with higher gusts. Additional intensification is possible. This is, this is key here. Additional intensification is possible prior to landfall. And Dolores is forecasted to be near hurricane intensity when it makes landfall later today. Rapid weakening is expected after landfall, and Dolores is expected to dissipate by the end of the weekend. So, uh, there's a, there's an outside chance that this may become a hurricane before landfall. It all just depends on how it wants to work with the warm waters of that area. So, now that we looked at that, let's take a look at the GFS here. We're going to take a look at the wind shear values here. And we don't have any wind shear values. So anyways, there's a 988 millibar system in six hours. So GFS really wants to take this to a hurricane before, right before landfall. 
we're going to see how that, you know, pans out. But uh, as you can see here, once it makes, once it touches land, it just goes kaput completely. So there, there's definitely some mountainous terrains where it's going. So obviously when a storm hits mountains, it says no. The storms say, I want no more of it. I'm quitting. That's it. That's just how it is in most cases. Now, obviously, we've seen cases where mm, the storms don't really care about where they're at, as we saw with uh, Isaias in the Atlantic last year, which became a hurricane. We're pretty much on a mountain. <laughs> <laughs> like uh, Isai is was one of those storms that defined all logic when it comes to oh hey is this mountain gonna cause this to die or <laughs> or what have you but you know that's neither here nor there that's just an example of a storm saying you know what this time I don't care um, I'm just gonna strengthen anyways but it seems in this case with uh, Tropical Storm Doorless, that's not going to be the case. It's just going to dissipate and hopefully bring some moisture to, pe the, to the states that need it here in the southwest because of a drought situation. So we're going to have to see how that all pans out as we get closer in time. All right, so here's the ECMWF, and obviously this is initialized at 8, 8, 8, uh, 8 p.m. last night. As you can see, it's 1,001 millibars, so we don't really have a recent Euro European model until probably 2 p.m. today, which I may do another update on, on both storms later on today, um, if not more so Tropical Storm Dorlos. Anyways, this, it has a 1,001 1, millibar uh, Tropical Storm here, and as you can see, it doesn't even last 24 hours. <laughs> so... You know, not much to talk about when it comes to the European model. Uh, we're just going to go out five days just for the hell of it. <clears throat> and <clears throat> nothing here. So, Euro is not really telling us much of anything besides the, uh, the 1001 millibar initialization point of 8 p.m. Anyways, here is the sea sea surface temperatures. And as you can see, it's working with some really warm waters here. So... The warm waters are definitely not a problem with this whatsoever. Um, that's that's why the National Hurricane Center is forecasting it to become almost a hurricane at landfall. Me personally, I'm gonna. I think it will peak out at 75 miles per hour before it hit land, landfall. I mean, it's already at 65, and it has about six to eight hours before landfall. So it's very much possible this becomes a hurricane before it hits land. Just for the fact that it's working with 29 and 30 degrees Celsius waters here. And uh, obviously, you know, GFS is not going to show us, you know, what the uh, wind shear is here. Uh, yeah, let's, let's try it down lower, like right here. Oh, it's working with 25 knots shear. So, I don't know. Me personally, I think it will peak out at a 75 mile per hour hurricane. Just my opinion, what I think about it. All right, so here is the IR loop of Dolores. And as you can see, it has some pretty healthy bands that are starting to wrap around the center here. Got some uh, pinks, which is representative of 80, negative 80 to negative 85 degrees of cloud tops. And, you know, as you can see, Mexican... Mexico, the southwestern Mexico coast is getting pummeled with rain here. Um, like I said, you know, if it gets its act together quick enough before landfall, I think it will be, be a 75 mile per hour hurricane when it goes in land. Anyways, with that being said, um, I want to thank you guys for watching. And I probably will be back again today with another update video. But we'll see what happens. Anyways, thank you guys for watching and have a nice day.